For this video, I'd like to talk about evaluating expressions with multiple variables. So in a previous video, we looked at different examples of evaluating expressions. This video will specifically focus when we have multiple variables. Like here, you can see both M and N. And sometimes we'll have two, three, four, it really just depends the situation. And some of these problems are going to specifically deal with just normal expressions without any fractions or decimals. And then some of the problems will deal specifically with fractions and decimals. So we'll look at both situations in this video. So let's start this problem. We know that M is five and N is four. So let me color code this. So let's say for M, we'll use this color and anywhere we see M, we're gonna replace it with five. And let's say we'll use, go with black for N. And anywhere we see an N, we're gonna replace it with four. And my recommendation is when you're substituting a number in for a variable, is to put that number in parentheses. So we have 10 times M, because they're written next to each other, we know we have multiplication, and M is just five. So I'm gonna replace five for M, but I'm gonna put it in parentheses just to remind myself that I need to multiply here. And by putting it in parentheses, it helps keep track of your negative numbers and their signs. So this is one way to help prevent making mistakes with negative numbers. And then we have n squared. So again, I'm gonna put it in parentheses and n in this case was four, and then we're gonna square it and then divide that by four. And at this point, we just have to simplify the expression. So we do our order of operations. We have to square before doing division. So four squared, Remember, it's just four times four, which is 16. So we got 10 times five plus 16 divided by four. And now we'll do our multiplying and dividing step. 10 times five is 50 plus 16 divided by four. 16 divided by four is four. And 50 plus four would be 54. So that would be our correct answer here. All right, let's move on to another one. So this one, we're given an expression involving C and D. So in this case, we wanna replace C with seven, and we wanna replace D with eight. So let's do that. So we're gonna replace five C, we're gonna replace C with seven, in parentheses, minus three times D, which is eight, again in parentheses, plus 11. And now we just simplify, we multiply here, so five times seven is 35, minus three times eight, which is 24, plus 11. 35 minus 24 is 11, and then we're gonna add 11 to that, and we get 22 for our final answer. And moving on, so now we have an expression, but now we have a decimal. So we're gonna replace A with one. So anywhere we see an A, we'll replace it with one. And for B, we're gonna replace that with five. So again, anywhere you see B, replace it with five. And with that, we have A, which is one, times by B, which is five, minus 0 0.5 times by B, which again is five. And one times five is five. And 0.5 times five, remember when multiplying decimals that you basically ignore the decimals. So five times five is 25. And at the end, you count up how many decimals were in your original product. Okay, in this case, you didn't have one. And in this one, you had one decimal place. So then in our result here, we're going to move the decimal just once. So you get 2.5. So this is minus 2.5. And remember, 0.5 is the same as a half. So this is essentially taking half of five, which is two and a half. And five minus 2.5 is simply 2.5. Okay, let's move to the next one. So now we again have a fractional expression. So we're gonna replace E with 15 and we're gonna replace F with two. So let's plug those in. We get E, which is 15 minus one half times f, which is two. And we have to multiply these fractions. And whenever you multiply a fraction by a whole number, I would recommend putting it the whole number over one. Because then it's a little bit more straightforward on how to multiply these fractions. Because remember with fractions, when you're multiplying, you just go straight across in the top and the bottom. So you get 15 minus one times two is two. 
and 2 times 1 is 2. So you end up with 2 over 2, which is 1. So you get 15 minus 1, which is 14. And this should make sense because you're effectively taking 1 half of 2, and half of 2 is obviously 1. So we get 14 here, and moving to the next one. So now we're actually plugging in a fractional value. So when we see C, we're going to replace that with 15. And when we see D, oh, excuse me, when we see C, we're going to place it with 1 fifth. And when we see D, we're going to place that with 15. So let's do so. We get 5 times C, which is 1 fifth, plus C, which is 1 fifth, times by D, which is 15. And in both these cases, we're multiplying fractions, or a fraction by a whole number. So I would recommend putting the whole number over 1 in both of these, and then just multiplying straight across. So 5 times 1 is 5, and 1 times 5 is 5. So you get 5 over 5 here. And for this one, 1 times 15 is 15 for our numerator, and 5 times 1 is 5 for our denominator. 5 divided by 5, or anything divided by itself, is just 1. And then 15 divided by 5, 5 goes into that three times. So you get 1 plus 3, which is 4.